MCQ 15 continue on the theme of energy change, but not so much on energy level diagram. Now here we see an experiment of hydrogen burning in air to form water. And we are looking for statements that is concerning of the enthalpy change of this reaction. So again, we do not have any information about the bond energy, because if I have, I could have calculated the bond energy of H, single bond H, O, double bond O, this forward section, the reactant part, will be involved in bond breaking. And bond breaking needs heat to be taken in, so bond breaking is an endothermic event. But on the product side here, if I do have the OH that is part of the structure of water, products are involved in bond formation, and bond formation is an exothermic event. So the general way to see the enthalpy change of the reaction is really to look at the magnitude of the enthalpy change that's endothermic when the reactants are breaking as well as to look at the enthalpy change which are exothermic when we are looking at the product formation. So for example here, if let's say I have in terms of my endothermic reaction it being higher, that means I need more heat to break my reactant as compared towards my exothermic reaction itself, it is considered to be lower because I'm releasing less heat, which is going to minus off the difference. And we should see that this overall reaction becomes an endothermic reaction because you're going to spend more energy, more heat to break rather than compared to the heat that was actually released. Now on the conversely speaking portion here, the enthalpy change is going to be overall negative if let's say the endothermic portion of breaking the reactant is lesser than the exothermic portion when heat is actually being released itself from that. So with that itself, we have A, B, C, D. So negative, negative, positive, positive. A would have then said that overall we should be releasing more heat in the comparison of reactants to product. But for C and D, if you want to go with the positive side, overall, it's going to be in the word overall, we are actually taking in more heat. And to be a bit more specific, the releasing more heat is going to be largely attributed to product formation. And for taking more heat, it's going to be largely attributed to the breaking of our reactor. So we're going to scan through each other's statement to see whether they align with what we want. So for A, energy change in breaking bonds in hydrogen and oxygen is greater than the energy change in making the bonds in water. So if we're going to talk about exothermic, then the term here, it should have been lower because we want to release more heat. So A itself is up. If you take like B, energy change in breaking bonds in hydrogen and oxygen is less than energy change in making the bonds in water. Now this seems to be legitimate. This seems to be legitimate. Let's take like C. So C, we're talking about positive. If it's positive, we actually want to take in more heat to break the reactors. Energy change in breaking bonds in hydrogen and oxygen is greater than energy change in making the bonds in water. So this also seems to be likable. And the last one here is energy change in breaking bonds in hydrogen and oxygen is less than that of making the bonds in water. So this again is going to be wrong if we're going to align with the whole exo something idea. So we have both B and C, they're both considered to be correct in what they're trying to say to give us an overall enthalpy change. So the last deciding factor is going to be in terms of understanding that a burning process over here in air, this could be otherwise be abbreviated as a form of combustion. So it's a little bit unfair here, but once you know that this is a combustion event, combustion is always an exothermic event, heat should be released overall. So we are aligned to say that as an exothermic event, we should choose B as our answer over here because it aligns with it being exothermic and then the explanation does support that claim as well.